the pumpkin slope. In the faraway Republic of Squashlandia, there are few inhabitants and very little to do. The long rainy season has just begun for Canadian civil servant Stephen Macy. Mr. Macy, a rather prickly man by nature, lives as a guest in the elegant home of rich local landowners, Lord Sterling and his lovely wife, Lady Hazel Sterling. Another house guest living on the Sterling plantation is Dr. Robert, a friend of the family. I hate this rain, Mr. Macy announces, coming in from the downpour, taking his thoroughly soaked raincoat off on the carpet and handing it to the butler. The butler is dressed in a tuxedo, an odd formality for such a faraway place in the middle of nowhere, Macy thought to himself. You'll get used to it, my boy, Dr. Robert said, tapping his oak and ivory pipe in a tray. The first few weeks are the hardest. Another few weeks of this, and I'm sure you'll go stark raving mad, said Macy. Then, turning to face Lord Sterling, Macy asks, Sir, how can you expect poor Lady Hazel to stand living here in this miserable place indefinitely? Lady Sterling stands it very well, Mr. Macy, said Lady Sterling, pausing her sewing. Macy shakes his head, takes a glass off the butler's tray, and gulps all of its contents down in one go. I consider myself quite fortunate living here, said the elderly lord, standing up from his comfortable leather chair. I have a beautiful young wife, loyal servants, and a strong team of working men and women on my pumpkin plantation, the largest plantation in Squashlandia, he added. You can have it, said Macy insincerely, dismissively toasting his host with a tilt of his glass. Take it with my blessing. I'm tired of Squashlandia pumpkins, pumpkin cookies, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin smoothies and stews, even pumpkin pasta and pumpkin sauce. I can't take any more pumpkin. I'll go stark raving mad and tear my hair out. Lord Sterling raised his bushy eyebrows, kissed his wife on the cheek and walked towards the front door where the butler stood holding his raincoat. I'd better go check on the harvest, my dear. This rain brings out all kinds of nasty creatures that will destroy our crop if we don't control them. I'll come with you, Dr. Roberts said, putting his pipe down and taking his own coat from the butler. Those awful pumpkin slugs are horrible pests. Ugly things, too, orange and brown with black stripes. The worst are the young ones. Starving they are. Slugs, we call them. They have soft legs like tentacles. The eggs hatch fast in this rain, Lord Sterling added. They grow to half an inch in just two or three weeks. Eat everything in sight, they do. Suck all the pulp right out of the gourds with their razor-sharp jaws, said Sterling. Then he and Dr. Roberts stepped out into the night full of rain and incoming fog. Macy had been staring at Lady Sterling salaciously the whole time the men were dressing to leave, making her very uncomfortable. How can you stand living here like this with that old man twice your age, Macy asked her. Enough, enough of that, if you please, Mr. Macy. You are welcome here as our guest, but not to intrude or insult us. Call me Stephen, he says, interrupting her. I'll call you Mr. Macy, and if you ever refer to my husband or his age again, I shall order the butlers to have your suitcase and your person removed to the train station and see to it that you are never permitted to return again. Is that clearly understood? Clearly, he said, looking over her unseemingly. Take a cold bath, Mr. Macy, she shouted, throwing her sewing down on a chair, and dashed up the stairs to her private residence and locked the door behind her. Macy put his wet raincoat back on and stormed off into the rain, miserably dejected. He ended up in a local cafe where he ordered a drink and sat down in the corner alone. Seated at the bar, a local man in a ratty overcoat and sodden sailor's cap crossed the room and asked him if he might join him. Macy didn't move or say a word at first. The man sat down beside him. Like a lot of squash landiers who grew up eating nothing but pumpkins, the man had a strange orange glow. My name is Don, he said. What's yours, if you don't mind my asking? Stephen Macy. You live with the Sterlings on the plantation, right? That's right. Beautiful woman, that lady Sterling, isn't she? It's what, what is it you want, Mr. Don, Macy asked him impatiently. Mr. Don leans in close and whispers, I want to offer you something, some help, you might say, something of comfort for a young gentleman like you, say, as that which lives in the same mansion as you do. Rather than being alarmed or put off by the forward remark, Macy took a moment to look the man over. What is it you have in mind, Mr. Don? Destiny, Mr. Macy, your fate, my fate, the fate of the lady herself, you might say. Get to the point, Mr. Don, or leave me alone. 
Macy was bitterly shaking his head. Beautiful woman like that, married to that old man? It's more than a shame it is, Mr. Macy, you know what I mean? No idea, I do not know what you're getting at, Macy dismissed him with a wave of his hand. I think you do, Don said, nodding with confidence. Bloody fool, Macy said, standing tall and angry now. Are you suggest? Oh, no, no, Don said, calming him down. It's not violence, I propose. Nothing as gory as that. Call it destiny. I want to offer you your fate, Mr. Macy. Fate is what I have to offer. How much and exactly how will you bring about my fate, Mr. Don? He asked, smirking in disbelief. One hundred Squashlandia crowns. And how? Mr. Don slides his chair inches closer. We have here in this country a certain bug, a pumpkin slug, we calls them. Yeah, so what? I've heard something about them. They eat pumpkins, doesn't everyone? Well, you see, young gentleman, the slug happens to like the scent of human hair and the wax inside the ear. Neither man spoke for a moment. The pumpkin slug is so soft, it can crawl across the back of a man's neck so you can't feel it. Now, for a hundred crowns, I can get my man to place a young pumpkin slug near the old man Sterling's ear while he's sleeping. Once the slug enters the ear, there's less than a chance in a thousand of it ever coming out again. What on earth are you talking about? Macy took Don's collar in his fist and demanded to know. You see, Mr. Macy, the pumpkin slug cannot turn around or reverse its progress. Backing out is impossible. The young slug will continue to eat its way inside of a man's head if it lands there. Then, when it reaches the brain, well, that's the end of it, Don said, snapping the toothpick he took from his pocket in half. Macy reaches inside his wallet and takes out a hundred-crown note. When, he asks, pulling the note back from Ron Don's grasp until he gets his answer. When? This very night, Mr. Macy, if that's your pleasure, young gentleman. The next morning... Mr. Macy came down to the breakfast room. The Stirlings were already seated, having their pastries and tea. Lord Stirling was reading his paper, and Lady Hazel was pouring tea in his cup. The butler asked Mr. Macy what he would like, and he answered tersely, Tea! He sips... He sits, slipping, he sits sipping his tea while he studies the ears of Lord Sterling carefully. The couple notice his staring, and Hazel asks him if there's something the matter. Oh, no, no, he says, shaking his head. Then Mr. Macy paused, reached up to his own head, touched his ear, and began scratching it lightly. Is there something troubling you, my boy? Sterling asked him. Macy takes out his handkerchief and turns it gently inside his ear canal with his finger. Noticing blood on his hanky, Macy yells, Oh my gods! They've put it in my ear! They've put it in my ear by mistake! He screams, running out the door crying into a wall of steady rain. Mr. Macy was kept in his room for his own safety. A week later, he had his first and only visitor brought to see him. When Dr. Robert and Lord Sterling opened the door to the visitor, he was shocked to see Mr. Bas Mr. Macy bound and tied with ropes to his bed. There were deep scabs and fresh scratches all over his face and neck. His hands were wrapped in bandages to prevent him from tearing his face and ears off to scratch at the pain, if he were to break free of his restraints, which looked next to impossible. The look in his eyes was one of a man sunk deep into the devil's fiery kitchen. Dr. Robert Lord Sterling and the strange visitor were disturbed by the sight of Macy when he opened his mouth wide in the shape of a silent, twisted scream. He's screamed so much these past days, Robert tells them. He's all screamed out. Can nothing more be done? Sterling asks the doctor. In a whisper, Dr. Robert says, We've temporarily run out of morphine. He won't last much longer. Another few days, I'd say. If he were more of a beast and less of a man, I'd put the beast out of his misery. You have a guest, Mr. Macy. We'll leave you both in privacy, Sterling said, and he and Dr. Robert left the room. Mr. Don crept forward, holding his wretched sailor's cap in his hand and shyly offering apologies. I'm so sorry, Mr. Macy, for your pain and suffering. Macy rolled his head far away to the side so he can to avoid, as far to the side as he could, to avoid having to see the man who betrayed him. I was, uh, uh, it, w it was an innocent accident, you might say. My man got into the wrong room is all. Please go away, said Macy. Just let me die. No fear of that, Mr. Macy. No fear of that, young gentleman. You will die. Won't, ma won't last much longer. Let me die or kill me, Macy weakly cries. 
Mr. Don slinks away backwards toward the door. Mistakes happen, Mr. Macy. Truly sorry I am. Thanks for the hundred crowns, he says, making a small salute before he turns and is gone. Downstairs in the parlor the next morning, Lady Hazel, Lord Sterling, and Dr. Robert are being served tea and discussing Mr. Macy's condition. The slug had eaten, has eaten its way straight through the man's brain, the doctor informed the couple, and came out the other ear. Would you like to see it? Lady Sterling holds her hand up to her face and turns her head away in disgust. My apologies, Hazel. I'm so sorry, that startled Dr. Robert said. Was there permanent damage? Lord Sterling asks him. So far, it seems he's made a remarkable recovery. He's able to stand and speak freely. It's truly astonishing, the good doctor said. Then, suddenly, looking sullen, he added, as for more lasting or permanent damage, we won't know until, as I was saying before. Before what, doctor? Please continue, said Mr. Macy, who suddenly appeared at the top of the stairs and slowly descended into the parlor. Tell them about what a miracle I am, doctor. Please go on. I'd love to hear it myself. You are a miracle. Yes, indeed, Mr. Macy, the doctor said, shaking his head vigorously. A miracle undeserved for a despicable conspirator to, mur to murder as you are. Robert looked as though he was about to spit on the floor. No one, no one has suffered as I have, doctor, Macy screams. Have any of you any idea what it's like to hear the constant biting, chewing echoes of monstrous agony devouring the flesh of my soul? Feeling suddenly faint, the faint, the butler helps Macy to the chair, to a chair to sit down. Lady Sterling moves quickly toward Mr. Macy to confront him head on. You've plotted to murder my husband, Mr. Macy. Did you really believe for a moment that, as a grieving widow, I would ever consider engaging with the likes of you any further? Yes, out of love, he replied. Love? You haven't any idea what love means. Bitter and defeated, Macy asks no one in particular. What happens now? Have me arrested for attempted murder? No, Lord Sterling said. No, you are free to leave, Mr. Macy. The butlers will pack your things and remove you to the strange station. Your travel arrangements away from Squashlandia have all been prepared. Wait, free to go, Macy said. Why have, what is it you haven't told me? Everyone else briefly glanced at each other, darting their eyes anywhere other than in the direction of Mr. Macy's face for the moment. Sit down, Mr. Macy, please, the doctor said. I examined the slug that passed through your brain. I killed it, squeezed it, in fact. Hearing this, Lady Sterling runs from the room, dashing up the stairs with her tear-wet handkerchief in hand. It was a female pumpkin slug, Mr. Macy, the doctor said, watching the dawning awareness slowly come over Macy's expression. I don't understand, Macy said, slowly raising his hand to the side of his head. Then, after a prolonged pause of quiet, Dr. Robert continued. Everyone knows that female pumpkin slugs lay eggs, dozens of them in fact. Macy's gut-wrenching screams go unheard under the dark storm clouds exploding with thunder and lightning. The End <laughs>